Hello again. Now this video has been uh, in the process of being made for a while now. I've been doing little bits here and there but just wanted to get it sort of all together. Basically in the past I've done uh, quite a bit with um, gramophone style horns and sound boxes and uh, tone arms but very little in the way of um, turntables although I did do uh, this uh, electric one uh, some time ago which I showed in a, a few previous videos. Anyway I've been experimenting with the idea of using a stepper motor uh, for a turntable and this is one that uh, I've taken out of an old, um, I think it's an old electric typewriter or electronic typewriter um, and I've got a 3D printed part on the top which I'll get to in just a moment. And the uh, electronics, which I'll also cover a bit more um, later on, uh, is an Arduino Pro Micro, well at least a clone of one, uh, which I've talked about in previous videos, and um, a Darlington transistor chip. And it's actually, um, well, I took them all off this board here, which I think is uh, the board um, that went in the uh, typewriter that the stepper motors came out of. But anyway, these are uh, ULN. 2003 there were three of them in there so I took all of them out um, so that's the uh, that's the stepper motor this thing on top here I say it's the 3d printed part um, it's designed to take some CDs or at least a CD on top as the sort of main turntable um, sort of like so um, and then underneath I've got slots to take uh, coffee stirrers, so they sort of stick in there. So um, it's going to be very simple and very crude. Um, these actually get quite hot, so I'm using some brackets. These are probably quite ancient Metclip Type 44 fencing brackets. Um, they're a bit splayed, so I've straightened them out in a vise. And I've got three of them, which I'm basically going to bolt together um, to make a sort of mount heat sink. And the middle one I've drilled out, um, basically so that um, this sort of boss on the bottom of the motor, um, if I get it right, um, won't catch. So there's there's enough uh, space there for it to for it to go through. So this will then sit better on this, and um, conduct the heat away so that will all sit on there, motor will go in the middle, CDs on top, sticks coming out like so um, and then um, I'm going to um, add some, some more buttons, I've just got one little test button on here at the minute but I'm going to add some sort of speed select buttons um, so that um, I can select different speeds for playing different sorts of records. Now uh, I have pre-drilled this hole in here. This was actually uh, not my finest moment. But in the end I had to finish it off with uh, a hand reamer. And uh, it's come out pretty okay, um, but um, I could have done a better job. There were various other ways I could have done it. To be honest, thinking about it, I could have mounted it on the faceplate of my little lathe and actually bored it out. Um, it's certainly uh, the size of work that's uh, small enough to go on the lathe. So, uh, But it would have taken a lot more time and effort to do that than, than my rather crude uh, approach. Just a quick note on the little button panel that I mentioned. Just going to use a strip of... Uh, sort of pad, pad board and some of these little press buttons uh, which I've salvaged out of various equipment. I've got loads, I mean this is where I keep sort of all the bits and pieces I salvage or at least you know some of them and uh, I've got other boards, I mean like this one here, um, in fact it was a 
one of these units here that I used on my um, Arduino record speed tester but there's some buttons and there's other buttons here and um, satellite uh, boxes um, in the UK Sky being sort of like the major brand um, they have a whole pile of buttons and those uh, boxes can be picked up very very cheaply and have some other useful parts in as well okay so I've done a bit of work on it now I built the little uh, button panel that I talked about. Um, this is just four push switches. Um, they're all wired together so that um, when you push one, um, it basically grounds out a line. So you've got five wires coming into it, one for each of the switches and uh, a ground wire. And uh, it's very easy on an Arduino to program it so that uh, it can detect um, a pin being pulled to ground so that's what I've done and I will publish the uh, source code um, for this in one of the comments uh, below the video and otherwise I'm just basically uh, sort of laying out things checking you know how high things have to be so how high does this uh, motor arrangement here need to be to work with this tone arm this is one that I built for um, you know some previous videos I've got a little lamp here that I've also um, built um, in a previous video which I hope will be suitable for actually getting some sound out of it. Um, the actual circuit here, um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail actually, um, it's a completely off the shelf circuit um, as published on arduino.cc, I will put a picture or a link or something in. But essentially, um, all I've done is uh, change which pins it connects to on the Arduino itself. Um, because um, I'm not using an Uno, I'm using a Pro Micro. Okay, so let's do a quick motor test. So this is uh, 0 RPM. This is 33, 45, 78. So there we are. 33, 45, 78. I can select them in any order I want. Okay, well I've come to um, join these bits together here and I realise there's a bit of a problem because when the motor's in place, like so, get it located, there's actually very little space in there. So um, I have a, a great big selection of um, M5 uh, screws and the like. Um, but I think my best bet or at least uh, one possible option is to take some M5 bolts like this and actually just uh, use my little lathe to uh, reduce the heads down, so face the heads down so they're just thinner. Okay, well I've attempted to uh, turn down the head of that bolt, but um, I've hit a problem. Basically, this knob here, or this control here, which uh, moves the, um, the cross slide in and out, um, is now not functioning. Um, there's actually a part inside that's two part epoxy resin together and that has failed. Um, so I'm going to have to find a different solution for fixing the uh, angle brackets together for the turntable. So I've had a bit of a hunt around in my workshop to find some fasteners to um, connect this all together. So I'll just take the motor out for a second. I'm using uh, M4 countersunk uh, screws here. Um, so that basically will will bolt these bits together like so. There's two little screws here to screw this bit down, two little screws here to screw this bit down. Um, these bits are going to screw in uh, on the sides here. The base of this will go in that hole in the middle and uh, as there's not really room for the little screws um, underneath it I'm basically going to screw the flanges of the motor into the bits of plastic so I'm going to just drill holes in the middle of them and screw them in and that basically should keep it all together nicely. I've uh, screwed and uh, bolted this together so um, you won't be able to see it move but uh, it actually does turn around at various speeds um, quite quietly um, I've also assembled the turntable. Now this is just this uh, 3D printed part and a couple of CDs which I've covered in paper and the coffee stirrers. And the coffee stirrers really just so that if I put a bigger record on um, it won't just sort of slide off. Um, so if I push that on now
Okay, so it's uh, pretty much ready for a test. I've made a few adjustments, um, so I'll just quickly go through those. So um, a few labels on the buttons, just so it's clear what's happening. Um, I didn't have a display um, or any sort of indications of what speed it was running at. So I'm going to use this multimeter here. And basically that's just set on a voltage mode. And um, I'm getting the Arduino to generate a pulse width modulation signal, um, which is controlling via a transistor here. Uh, the 12 volt um, supply here. So basically as I select different speeds, so if I select 33 you can see the display actually shows 3.3 volts, 45, 4.5 volts and 78, 7.8 volts and I've masked off the uh, the last digit because um, I, ca I can't control things finely enough for that. And I've marked that stop rather than um, off because actually even when it's stopped there's still power going through the system um, and uh, actually the um, this sort of heat sink arrangement here does actually warm up quite noticeably. Uh, the other thing that I've adjusted is that I've um, rewired the tone arm um, with a shielded wire and added on a little um, preamp module and it's basically if I find the packet it's one of these, and I got these. Uh, got this from Maplin, um, either during their final sale or sometime around that point. Um, I could have used a, a simple little circuit, um, but it was just quicker and easier just to use something that I already had made up. So basically, that's wired in um, into here. So basically, uh, makes the uh, the signal loud enough to really hear. Okay, so let's give it a go. I ought to say that uh, this is in working order, but uh, I'm sure there's plenty more improvements I can make. And uh, you will definitely hear some issues uh, with some of the records. So anyway, I'm going to start off with um, this record here. It looks like a 7 inch 45. It's actually a 33 and a third RPM record. We set that going. I think that's enough of that. That is actually a rendition of Rupert the Bear from a children's TV program in the uh, UK in the 70s. Um, this, let's stop that for a minute, this record here is actually uh, a cover uh, record. So basically re-recorded versions of six hits. Um, anyway, um, definitely some issues there. Now that might be the amp uh, it might be uh, issues to do with the turntable, the fact that it is a stepper motor going around. It's not a constantly s or not a smooth rotation. It does step. Um, what I will do in a future video is actually do some comparisons between uh, this system, so the turntable and the, uh, the audio system, just to see or try to identify better where the problems are. Anyway, that was 33 or a 33 and a third record. So let's try a 45. And that was a blast from If You Knew Susie. Um, again, um, almost like a cover record. Um, this record has actually appeared in quite a few of my videos. Um, it's quite a handy uh, record for this sort of testing. So that didn't sound too bad. And um, finally, this is a little um, 78 record. Now, this is actually vinyl, but it, it does run at 78 RPM. And it's uh, one that came with my little toy gramophone, which I showed in a previous video. 
Right, now that's demonstrating one problem I have got. Um, basically, sometimes it doesn't start up properly. Let's stop that. It sometimes needs to be sort of brought up to speed um, through going through the other the other ranges. Right. Now we had a bit of noise on the turntable there as well, but that wasn't too bad a rendition. Let's try a bit more of that. So that's really not too bad at all. So anyway, um, that's just a little bit of testing there. And um, it does demonstrate that it does work, um, but it does also need a little bit more work. And I certainly am going to do a few more experiments using this kit and the variations on this kit um, in the uh, fairly near future. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Mr. RG Stuff.